Hi, welcome everyone. I am Precious. And in this class, we're going to look at the concept of indices and laws of indices. And so we'll see how to state the laws, identify and make use of the laws in calculations, and also how to solve problems involving initial equations. Initial equations are equations that have indices in them. And so the keywords are all of them. So first of all, we make use of the laws of indices to solve problems of, uh, of indices. Meanwhile, what is indices? Mathematics that involves numbers written in basis with index. And so what do we mean by that? When I have a number written, for example, say a to the power of two, this actually means I should multiply a by itself up to the number of the power you have here, which is two. So if I have x raised to the power of four, it means I should multiply x by x up to four times. And so the, the one up here is called the power or index. And the plural of index is what we have here as indices, while the one down here is called the base. Okay, so the study of uh, numbers in this form is what we call indices. And then the laws, the rules that allow us the uh, opportunity to do this uh, mathematics are the laws, and which, this, which are what we are going to see now. And so the first law here or rule is called the multiplication rule. It says that if I have two numbers in index form or two or more in index form multiplying themselves and they have common base, that all I need to do to multiply them is just to pick one of the bases and then just add the powers. So and that's why you have uh, a here to be equal to, sorry, a power m times a power n to be equal to a raised to the power of m plus n. And so look at examples, 10 raised to the power of 5 multiplied by this. I'll just pick 10, then add the powers, and I will get uh, 10 raised to the power of 9. And then look at the second example here. So what do you do in this case? The first thing you must note here is that you first of all multiply the coefficient. If you have numerical coefficient, assuming it's an algebraic term. So first of all multiply the numerical coefficient, and that's why you have this. And then multiply each of the variable by the like term. So x will multiply x, and when that happens, you recall that the power of x here is actually 1. And the power of z here is also 1. And so when you do that, now you are going to have 2 plus 1, which is 3, 2 plus 3, which is 5, and 3 plus 1, which is 4. And so when this multiplies this, you get 16, and this is our solution. And then the second rule here, we call this the division rule. If I have index numbers dividing themselves, and then they have common base, all I need to do is just to subtract. So here, multiplication, you add. In division, you subtract. So look at these examples here. So I have these divided by this. Now, all I need to do is just to take one of the bases, and then I will have 3 minus. Remember, this is already minus. So I'll have 3 minus minus 2. And then, of course, minus minus is plus. And so 3 plus 2 will give us 5. The second example here, now, in this case, they have... Uh, coefficient there's a coefficient of nine here and there's a coefficient of three here please this is actually um to the power of nine not eight okay so uh in this case now if i now in this case just like what i did here the coefficients would divide so nine would be divided by three and then times of course 10 raised to the power nine will be divided by 10 raised to the power six and then uh, when that happens this is going to give you three and then you pick the common base here and you have 9 minus 6, which is equal to 3. And so the third rule here, we call it the zeroth rule. It says that anything raised to the power of 0 is 1. And so I have A. A here means an arbitrary number, 1 million, whatever, positive, negative, raised to the power of 0. B is an alphabet, is equal to 1. And so look at the example here, 6 times Z raised to the power of 0. Of course, like what we said is 1 times 6, which is actually equal to 6. And here we have 9 raised to the power minus 9, sorry, x raised to the power minus 9 divided by b raised to the power of 0. And b raised to the power of 0 is 1. So when you divide it, you have this. The fourth rule here is called the, the law of negative index, or you call it the negative index rule. So it says that when you have a negative power, 
that that minus here turns to one all over. That's the reciprocal of the same number, but now with a positive uh, power. And so uh, look at this example here. 4 is the power of minus 3. So we'll just become 1 all over. Of course, our 4 will now become raised to the power of positive 3. And 4 is power of 3 is 64. And so this becomes your solution. Example 2, we have 1 minus 4 raised to the power of minus 2. So I'll subtract this to get minus 3 raised to the power of minus 2. What do I do next? I'll change the negative uh, power here to 1 all over. And then I'll have a positive power. And minus 3 raised to the power of 2 is equal to 9. And that's my solution. And then the next uh, rule here, we have uh, what we call the power power rule. So a number is raised to a power m, and then everything down to the power of n. This rule says that you should just remove the bracket and let the powers multiply themselves. And so you have this. And then what if now you have a product and all of them being raised to a particular power? So just remove the bracket and then distribute the power on all the terms in that product. And so you have a raised to the power of m, b raised to the power of m. And now this also applies to division. So the implication is that if I have a all over b, all raised to the power of m, this is actually the same thing as a raised to the power of m, all over b raised to the power of m. Please take note of that. And so we see some examples. Look at this, b raised to the power of 2, all raised to the power of 4. This is for this rule. And of course, you remove the brackets, you have 2 times 4, and that is 8. And then look at this one. This is talking about this division here. So when I take away the, the bracket, the, the power will come on 2 and also come on this. And when it comes on this, this rule will come to play. And so I will now have this. And so this will give me 4 all over 5 squared is 25 times x raised to the power of 2. Please take note of that. And then that's your solution. Look at this one. It talks about the rule 6 here. So the power 3 would distribute on everything here. It comes on minus 3 on 2 uh, u raised to power 2 and v. And that gives us this. So minus 3 raised to power 3 is minus 27. u raised to power of 2 times 3 is this. And finally, we'll have this. And then we'll have what we call the fractional index rule, which is the last rule we're going to consider here. It says that when a number is raised to the power of a fraction, that you should simply take the denominator to form a root and the numerator will form a power. And so you can write this like this also. So look at some examples. I have 32 raised to the power of 4 over 5. So I'm going to take this denominator, which is 5, to form a fifth root. And then everything is raised to the power of the numerator, which is 4. And the fifth root of 32 is 2. 2 raised to the power of 4 is 16. And the second example here says we have 1 to 5 raised to the power of negative fractional index. So first of all, I'm going to apply the negative index rule. That's to tell you that it is possible to have more than one rule in a particular problem. So your understanding of all the rules helps you to know how to apply them. So I'll first of all, apply the negative index rule here. And so I'm going to have 1 all over 1 to 5 raised to the power of the positive 2 over 3. And then under this denominator now, I will now apply this uh, fractional index rule. And when I do that, the denominator turns to a cube root, and then the numerator becomes a square. And the cube root of 1 to 5 is 5. 5 raised to the power of 2 is 25. So I have 1 all over 25 as my solution. And then we have a third example here. Sorry, this is 3. And then, um, okay, and then, so what do we do here? When you have a, fraction, a, a decimal as your power, first of all, take it to a fraction. And if we change 1.5 to a fraction, we'll have 3 all over 2. And remember, there is a, a, cube, a cube root here. And now, remember that in all of these rules, it can actually go either ways. So what does that mean? Look at what we have here. Since we are told that in the previous um, rule, that if I have a, a, a raised to the power of, let's say, 1 all over 3, that this is the same thing as cube root of a raised to the power of 1. So the implication is that this can actually go this other way. So if I have, for example, 4th root of x, I can actually write this as x raised to the power of 1 over 4 because the power here is 1. And so it can go either way. So that's what I applied here. 
I have cube root, so I can bring that cube root to now become 1 all over 3. The root here becomes denominator, and the power here, there's a power of 1 here. In this, but of course, if you put this in bracket here, there is a power of 1. So, and that's the one we have up here. And then, by the power power rule, this 3 over 2 here will multiply 1 over 3. And of course, you know what will happen here. This will cancel this. And so, we'll now have only 1 all over 2 left. And 64 raised to the power of 1 over 2 by the fractional index rule. This is the same as square root, and which is going to give us uh, 8. Right. And so, having seen all of this, the next thing we want to look at is initial equations. How do you solve equations involving indices? All right. So, we have uh, a particular rule to take note of to add to the rules we have seen. When you have two index numbers on the, the opposite sides of an equal sign, and their bases are the same. Now, it means that their powers must also be the same. Now, but that rule is on a condition that the basis you have must not be 1. And why is it so? Because if I have 1 raised to the power of 3, for instance, it will be equal to 1 raised to the power of 10, even though that their powers are not the same, because 1 raised to the power of anything will still give you 1. So apart from that, once the bases are the same, the powers must be the same. Okay, now we have example. Solve the following equations, about six of them, uh, to look at uh, specifically. So let's go. Now, the first one here says that we should solve this. And if you are asked to solve an equation, you are only asked to find the value of the unknown. And so we want to look for A. And what do you do here? You apply any of the rules of indices that you know. And so we have a negative index. So first of all, we remove the negative index by making this become 1 all over a raised to the power 1, which is a. And to be equal to our 2, we take it to a fraction, which is 2 all over 1. And why did I do that? So that I'll be able to cross multiply. And when 2 multiplies a, I'll get 2 a. 1 times 1 is 1. And dividing both sides by 2 here, I'll get the value of my a as 1 all over 2. And then the second one, the first thing you need to do here, clear the, the, the coefficient on the left-hand side by dividing both sides by 2, and you will have this. And when this happens, then you, are, you will try to apply that rule where we said that if the bases are the same, the powers will be the same. And if the powers are the same, then it means that the bases will be the same. So I'll try to see. Now I'm looking for the base. So I'll try to see if I can express 27 to be in a power of 3. So that if the powers will be the same, then I will easily get my base. And that happens here that I can express 27 as 3 raised to power 3. And so since the powers are the same, therefore my x is equal to 3. For example, 3 here, what do we do? We try to express each of them in the same base. I can write 9 as 3 raised to power 2, and I can write 27 as 3 raised to power 3. And by power power rule, this becomes 2x. And so when I take away the equal basis, the powers will be the same. So 2x will be equal to 3. And finally, you will have that your x alone is equal to 3 all over 2. Now, in the fourth example here, we are asked to find x in this case. So whenever you have a decimal, remember what I said, always take it to what? To a fraction. So and how do we take this to a fraction? Very simple. All you needed to do here is to note that this is equal to 1 all over. Then you write 1. And so you are going to move this decimal point until it gets to the front of 1. And so we moved how many times? 4 times. And so you are going to add 4 zeros here. And so that's how to do this conversion. And when you have this, the next thing is to change this to index form. And that gives you 10 raised to the power of 4. And by negative index rule, this becomes 10 raised to the power of negative 4. Why I am doing all of this is so that I can get equal basis. And once I have done that, the equal powers become what? Uh, sorry, the powers become what? Equal. And so we have the fifth example, very simple. Express the right-hand side in base 4. We can easily do that. 4 raised to the power of 3. And since the bases are the same, then the powers will be the same. So C minus 1 will be equal to 3. Take minus 1 to this side. Our C is equal to 4. And then... The last example we have here, 5 raised to the power of 1 all over x equal to this. Now, we know that inside 21, 25, I will have 5. So, I'll first of all express it in base 5. And so, that will give me 5 raised to the power of 3. And by negative index rule, I am going to get that this is the same thing as 5 raised to the power of minus 3. Why am I doing so? 
because I want the two sides to have the same base. And when I do that, the powers will become equal. And at this point, remember, this is supposed to be equal to minus 3. But minus 3 is the same thing as minus 3 over 1 because I want to cross multiply. And that gives me this, minus 3x equal to 1. And therefore, my x alone is minus 1 all over 3. When you divide both sides by minus 3. And uh, of course, that is where we'll end it for this class. Kindly note your questions if you have any. And recall that our objective was to state the <coughs> sorry to take note of the laws of indices, identify and use them in calculations, and solve some equations involving indices. All right, so we'll see you in our next class. Bye.